Okay, so I thought I was going to be talking about Wembenyama and Scoot today because I've been sick the past couple days, so I wasn't able to get to it then. Uh, but then the Draymond Jordan pool thing just went to a different level because the video dropped today, right? And I mean, we've all seen it. The Warriors, we all assume, are going to suspend him. I think that's a pretty safe bet. And from there, it's like, it's a whole bunch of I don't know. How is Draymond going to respond to that? How is Jordan Poole and Draymond's relationship moving forward? How is everybody's relationship with Draymond moving forward? And the other thing, of course, is that they can't pay everybody when you fast forward a few years between Clay, Poole, Wiggins, Draymond, Moody, Wiseman, and Kaminga's deals are also like not that far away, to be honest, at this point. A little far away, but not super duper far away. Because, of course, you're extension eligible after your third season. Draymond has two years left this year, and then the year after the season that's about to come up as a player option for about $27 million. I assume he will accept that, although it is kind of a fascinating thing, at least for me to think about, of like, if Draymond was on the open market, what would his worth be to other teams? Because I think it's fair to say he means more to the Warriors than he would pretty much anybody else, given his chemistry with Steph, right? And then defensively, of course, he's great. Like, he would still get a contract, no doubt about it. But the fact that it is so ingrained in the Warriors' system of, oh, they're sagging off a of Draymond? All right, get the ball to Draymond. Someone's going to run a handoff, most likely Steph, Claire, Poole. They're going to come around it, and now you got to step up, and now you're just kind of screwed, right? It's tougher to get to that point. It sounds very simple, but it's tougher to get there if you're suddenly on a new team that already has an established offensive system. And, of course, there's only one Steph Curry. So there's that. And then, of course, you have this, which is definitely not a net positive when it comes to relationships and chemistry and all that. So this could affect that, even if we're not at the moment just yet when the Warriors have to do their, oh, crap, here we go. Like, who are we really keeping and who are we not? But let's go there. Why not? Uh, if you force me to have a prediction right now, what does Draymond Green's contract situation look like in 2025? Is he on the Warriors? My guess, and I mean... We are living in the moment of this, so that could be swaying my opinion any which way. And I hope this doesn't come across as like a hot take or whatever, because I don't want to be that guy. My prediction would be that he is either not on the Warriors in 2025, or he is, but it is on a team-friendly contract. Now the cap's going up, so what is team-friendly now might be like 4 or 5 million more in a couple of seasons, but yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. I can be wrong on that. And uh, look, as far as how Draymond would feel about that, and again, what the market would be for him from other teams, like it's all just a very interesting thing. And I think part of that as well is the idea of, okay, let's say Draymond's days on the Warriors are potentially numbered with this being the beginning of the end if you want to get super dramatic. Again, I think there's a very decent chance he's still on the team for the entirety of his career, but for less money, that sort of thing. But... If you want to go down that route, well, then you got to have the conversation of who's your starting power forward in 2025 when Steph Curry is like 36 years old or whatever. Well, Jonathan Kaminga is a very interesting player. He already has played some four when Draymond has missed games. And uh, look, let's be clear. Jonathan Kaminga, I will say most likely, will never be the defensive player that Draymond Green is because Draymond's one of the best defensive players ever. He's also never, most likely... I'll just keep saying that. Never going to be the passer that Draymond is, and he most likely will never have the sixth sense with Steph that Draymond has. What Kaminga does have is way more verticality than Draymond could ever dream of having. And if he could just get to a point where the defensive IQ matches up with his physical profile, I mean, look, he's 6'8", he can jump out of the gym, he's got a 6'11 wingspan, then I think you could manage that defensively if you're the Warriors. Some of this also depends on where Wiseman ends up defensively as well. As for the offense, I mean, if Kaminga can be just a super effective screen setter for Steph and just constantly get downhill, then I think that can still be effective enough. And it's not just with Steph. I mean, it's Kaminga setting off-ball screens as well. If there's any sort of a miscommunication when you're trying to chase around all the Warriors shooters, and then you've also got the potential of Kaminga dunking on your head, like, that's, you know, that's scary. He's already a better shooter than Draymond. We'll see where it ends up with Kaminga, but, like, his scoring potential is real. But again, the IQ's got to get there with Kaminga. It's also a matter of, let's say they do load up on Steph on a screen for the sake of giving Kaminga the middle of the floor. Then you got to be able to make that split-second read, whether it's a kick out to the corner, whether it's a lob to the big. You know, Draymond has made a killing off of doing that. The other thing with them, too, is that after the 2024 season, where they give their pick to the Grizzlies, 
they'll be able to trade all their picks after that. So that will also open up more trade possibilities for them. And while all this is happening, they're just hoping that Steph can pull a LeBron and just defy time as long as possible. And I mean, I do think that's just kind of the new thing. I mean, it's not just LeBron, it's Chris Paul, it's Kyle Lowry. It can be done. The one thing, though, is that similar to LeBron in this respect, Steph does so much for this team. And as far as what that does for aging, I don't know. That's a lot of the situation right now. It's a big ol' I don't know. 